love that Simple and Zywoo are getting. Everybody's like, oh, Simple, Zywoo, oh, they're the best, the goats are... And Nico's just sitting on the sidelines going, what? What is this? Right. He's going to come in here, and he's just going to be looking to challenge them for that crown of the best in CS. That's actually exactly what I want him to do, because it was a real topic of discussion. I don't know how many people converted to Nico camp, but definitely if you followed, you know, comments on Reddit or wherever you, you, you follow Counter-Strike discussions, uh, generally there were people making that case, for, but it's been a long time. So, yeah, I definitely want to see uh, Nico trying to, and, and try and see if he can get up there again, because it is really, really fun to watch. He does have an incredible style. Well, here we go. Astralis with two Molotovs and flashbangs in a pistol round. Already taking over ramp. This is a really unorthodox spy coming out from Astralis. And I wonder if G2 are going to be quite ready for it. Device is in there. Molotovs. Actually, that Molotov failed. I think it was in the middle of everything. It was meant to be in the hut. Not that it really matters right now, but that's kind of scary. But Device is on the ladder just right underneath them. They haven't seen him yet. The bomb is planted as well. And now, actually, yes, yeah, staying alive out here is so much better. Let's see if he can just... Uh, yeah, I was going to say, don't even show you're there. It's way too soon. Now, they can try the retake. Four versus five. I think he went way too early on that, but it's hard to call, isn't it? Dupree will take down Nico, and it's back into a four on four. Dude, I mean, there's such a big information gap here as Kenny and Hunter are going to push forward. Hunter with another one, and Glaive is down to five HP. Just like that, it is G2 just going to be taking over completely. All of the angles are covered. Hunter with another kill makes a triple for him in this pistol round. G2 hit the ground running on the CT side. And while Device tried to be the hero there, and it may have slowed things down, that's what maybe he, that's the thing where it's like he goes down and then G2 right. have to second guess. They have to be like, is he the only one out here? Do we have to worry about getting flanked from somewhere else? Is that the play that, uh, that, that, that he's going for there, Device? I really think that is just, again, them like waking up to to like sort of remembering a little bit more or so i there's just even the fact that he spots three people there and that he saw you know one guy like there's just so much information that he just pass on mm. they have the bomb down and everything i don't i can't think of a very good reason why device the, is the one to initiate the fight in that moment mm. that's device. that's kind of risky he's looking pretty dialed in this has actually got to be one of the earliest tactical timeouts that we've ever seen. I mean, lose the pistol, call a timeout. Not every day that you see this from any team out there. That's interesting here from Astralis, really trying to uh, set things up. They are going to go for the force buy. They're going to max out on nades with the pistols. Guys, we've already lost track of the plan. <laughs> What are we doing? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I actually th I would read that even as a sign of the frustration from from that whole scenario because he was in such a, an amazing position, right? Doesn't mean you're definitely going to win it or anything like that, but it definitely means that um, you know you should be getting a kill and staying alive. I just I just still think staying alive is more valuable. Even if he got a kill and got traded, I would still have said I don't think that's worth it. I think it's you know don't be doing that. It's, and the bomb was only just planted, right? Like if they had a lot of time, G2, it's not like they were under a lot of pressure. If we're down to late in the bomb timer, then yeah, maybe you can you can start to try and, 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 and you know, do a little bit more. All right, similar setup here. Molotovs go everywhere. It's the triple of Molotovs, the flashes. They used this yesterday against, the um, was it MIBR? And it worked just the same. It's such a powerful strategy. Aminek are going to be getting uh, shut down to 19 health. In fact, I actually, I actually put out a clip on Twitter, Samla. I was showing people this exact setup. I'm kind of happy about how that worked out. Was so it yeah. on Skybox? It was on Skybox, yes. Um, and I, like that, um, yeah, that... It worked out exactly the same. So, so yeah, they model off the hut. They model off behind the silo where the sort of default position is for for any A anchor. And then they model off that far corner where the where the vent is, where people usually stand. And then they have an incredible timing on the flashbangs. I think Device was throwing essentially two flashbangs from in from the uh, T roof, and you know he's just kind of be counting like two seconds between them, but it's just enough that it's very hard because you're running out of the fire into the flashbang and then you have to turn around to, uh, draw, to dodge the next, next flashbang. It's just always going to be tricky. So what an execute from Astralis. That was very cool. Job well done. Yeah, super clean. And clearly the setup that they've fine-tuned as a unit of five here on Nuke, that was key. All of a sudden, the tactical timeout is worth it. Slowing things down to set up for that play worked wonderfully. They even managed to save both Augs of FAMAS. I mean, <laughs> yeah. That's brutal as far as Astralis are concerned. They're going to be loving life right now. Yeah. I mean, that, that kind of a turnaround, actually, you make a great point, especially with the weapons picked up. That's actually a, a bit of a disaster for G2. It's early on, but still, that's not what you would love to see. 
if they had just won the round with, I don't know, the Eagles, but hadn't really picked anything up, and it was like a one-on-one, -on -one and Astralis barely win it, then yeah, that's different, but... But the fact that it's that one-sided and they just get all the rifles for free, that is, that's definitely bad news. Hunter, missing the chance for a 1D. He's had a third chance now, he's running out of bullets. And, well, still a two-on-two. -two. Somehow that took so long and there was no punishment and I don't even know how that happens. Yeah. In a very tough spot here, he should be getting attacked from the other way. It's Sip to get that one and now it's a one-on-one. -on -one. And he has got armor here next. So this is so winnable for him. Yeah, MP9 up close. If Zipnix makes any noise at all. Next is electing to just hold. All right, what is he? Uh... <laughs> what, what did he say there? What did he say? All right, we'll get to that after this because Maze just wrote something in the chat. He meant to write it in team chat. Instead, he put it in the hole. So uh, we have luckily got a translator live here yeah. with us on site. We'll be getting to that to you in just a moment. He wasn't giving anything away. He was just saying, I, I, you know, I really just wanted to hold him there. I think I think that was Maze Trump maybe fighting. Uh -huh. And he just didn't want to, like, he didn't want to actually go and fight him. He just wanted to hold him in that corner. So. Okay. There Not were a bunch of stars there, too. So I'm guessing he, was, uh, he had some colorful language. I'm sure that he did. <laughs> I The timing here, look at the patience on, on Nexa. Uh, like, he's uh, the one that's under a lot of pressure to try and find out where Sip is and make sure he gets close to the bomb and all of that. And he's been he's been not been walking into anything. And Sip, probably a little bit frustrated. Out in the open, going to be a little bit of an attempt there. Eight seconds left, and swings for it again. And Sip, no! One more time for the clutch. <sighs> Two health. It's Two just disgusting. HP left on Zipnix with that clutch. And when he backs off, you're thinking that's it. He's done. He's decided. He's capitulated, right? As soon as you try and back off, you're, you're on the defensive. You're on the back foot. Not with Zip. That's all just a mind game from Zipnix. He's just baiting it in. Boom. Just drops him. I can't believe it. Unreal. Two to one on the T side for Astralis. Once again, the clutch. So sick from Zipnix. I don't think anybody else pulls that off. But Zip... He's just made of sterner stuff. Listen, Nexa played that round so well. Just like everything about that was really well done. I, I don't even know how you win those rounds. It's just completely absurd. Megas going forward. There is a bit of a trap for him here. Yeah, that's not bad at all. More showing up and Amanek even stumbling back down the stairs. We'll get the headshot on the pre with the five seven. So now it's a three on four. And outside, yeah, that's a pretty good return, but the stolen AK. Oh, now hunting them slowly. Kenny going to get shot at the back, but still a two on two. And I mean, if nothing else, there's still a, an amazing round out of G2, even if they don't end up winning it. It's still looking really good. Amanek nearly catching Sip. And now it's Nico one versus two, but he does not have armor. And that is just a giant problem here. I mean, it's certainly been communicated that Zipnix is very low. So his prime concern is going to be Glaive. Fresh smoke going down on Upper, though, is going to definitely slow things down for him here. You can see him just stomping along. He doesn't really care if they hear that either. There is only one option. He's not about to run through a smoke. Yeah, he might just give yeah. it up here. So, hey, yeah, this is appropriate from Nico. Yeah. Hold on to the AK. Dude, we saw what he was capable of with the AK on Dust 2. If he holds on to that gun going into the next round, he could be just ruining Astralis completely. Although he is looking to be in position to try and cut them off as they get away. Not going to hit it. Love that. It's a good try. Sip goes up with the bomb, if nothing else, meant that they couldn't just run straight out. And I think you're right, though. That second smoke that goes down in, in Mini is, uh, that's the thing that makes it kind of impossible on top of the lack of armor and, and kit. So, still a very dangerous round. I mean, G2, again, not, not letting Astralis just get away with everything for free here, which is really good to see. Got to keep that pressure on Kenny on the AWP. And let's see. First really even fight here for uh, for uh, both sides. No head armor on three of the players, and Sip does have that uh, Mac-10, so that, that makes me a little bit nervous. It's going to be a disaster, but Nexa does have head armor down there at ramp. He's going to be running away, and uh, won't really run into the grave, but they're still hunting him. They're going for him, and this is a little bit of a problem. He's only going to get the one kill. Back up there, Hunter, range, and nice shot, and just closing the door behind him. All very sensible. They have the advantage now. Three versus four. Let him get the bomb down and get everyone in here for the retake. What a gentleman. Don't want to let it draft it. You know, always keep that door closed. And while Molly going to be going down, it is still a man advantage for Astralis, and I think this is still going to be fairly tricky here for G2, considering device. You know, they've got the angles here, Astralis. There are a lot of bit, a lot of information getting gained though for G2 as they realize now that Dupree was holding close. He needed to take one with him though. 
grenade could kill Amanek. Oh, it's not quite going to do that. Doesn't damage to Hunter, but maybe that doesn't even matter. Nico goes down, and now it's all on Glaive. One versus three. He's going to pick that up. I don't know about the smokes, though. He's going to get one right through. I thought maybe they would have just taken the fight. Did they not have a kit? Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think they had a kit. Otherwise, maybe they could have gone straight for it. But that's a round for Astralis, and it was looking very, very dire. It's a nice triple kill on Glaive. Wow, that's interesting. Looking zoned in as well. Let's see it here from Glaive's perspective again. That is the must-win shot right there. Dropping the vent player. After that, it is all on him. And it turns out that Zip isn't the only one in these situations. He manages to pull off another one. Astralis, 4-1. to one. Once again, just one player surviving for them. Their economy is not getting out of control, but they are getting runs on the board of T-Side Nuke. G2, though, are going to be the ones to call for the timeout now. Trying to slow down the pace a little bit here. I like it. I really can't believe it. I... I... I was so ready to see him just fall to all of that. It's, uh, not not because he wasn't Sip, just because I thought, what is he going to be doing from that position, you know? And then when they smoke him, they actually give him, first of all, they give him away out of the corner, and they give him always the chance to just go for the full spray, and just even even if even if there was another one diffusing behind it, like he could have kept that, that spray up for a while. He was slow on health, so I, I thought maybe that would have been better. Who knows? I, mean, I think I don't think they had a kit. I think that's probably what changed their minds about it and said, you know what? This is going to be too rough, so... 4-1 to one regardless, and G2 with... Well, they had an M4, Nico. Not so much anymore. I know, I know. unfortunately for him. Nice little bait there. Amigos. Oh, he gets the follow-up. Takes Kenny out of the fight. I like that, though. Realizes what's going on. Uses that rifle for bait. Amadek now with the AUG, though, is going to win this duel if Magus, Magus peeks into him. So, uh, Magus needs to be careful not to overstay his welcome. It would be really unfortunate to lose this advantage. And, yeah, he realizes it and backs off. Yeah. Super reasonable play. I'm sure you do feel a little bit fired up when you get the first two kills. You're like, all right, let's take more. But it is much, much smarter to uh, to change your mind. Nexa with a eagle. Bit of an uh, unusual position. Doesn't really work out, but it definitely could have. Leaving Hunter with a uh, picked up M4. It's like me with the dig. <laughs> Where are all the bullets going? It's like almost all of us with the dig, isn't it? Yeah, and then you get Nico, it just makes it look easy. I don't get it. Just how does this work? All right, five to one. This is it. Let's see. What are we going to get out of G2? Should be the full buy across the board for both uh, for both teams. G2 have solid money. And he's going to get that AWP in play. Some, I mean... This is a, such a good start for Charlotte. Don't want to take anything away from them, but man, some of these rounds have just been way, way too close. And yeah, we'll see if, if G2 can withstand the pressure. I mean, that's something else, right? We, we talked about the honeymoon phase. We talked about sort of, yeah, they've been playing a very powerful uh, couple of games of Counter-Strike so far with this new lineup. But it's always different when you when you start to suddenly feel the pressure and you're like, oh man, this is not working so well. And like, you know, now we're on the... We're under a little bit more scrutiny, and some of the rounds that we really want to clutch and we feel like we're ours suddenly go the, go the other way. That puts a different part of the team to the test, and, and that's the you know the mental part, right? How do you how do you survive tough rounds? Looking like a very similar type execute here again. This is the one that Astralis really enjoy doing. So uh, flash, uh, sorry, Molotov there, not quite committing to the rest of it. Maybe just trying to force something out. I think that's it. Trying to bait a reaction. I mean, it is keeping three players solid on the A site right now for G2. Yeah. Those nades coming in there. And now we'll get that uh, smoke wall coming down outside. There is only going to be the one player, Nico. And he lets his presence get felt here with that, uh, well, not only the HE on Omegas, but dropping that smoke. Dupree catches him and getting aggressive. And Zipnik's there. Whoa! Hard to get out! <laughs> don't, don't want to blow yourself up. Kenny back here in the corner. Going to be smoking up the squeak dawn. 40 seconds. Oh, this could turn into a very, very interesting round for a whole number of reasons. The lack of time here for Astralis is about to become an absolute disaster for them. 30 seconds on Nuke is really not that much time, especially when you get down lower as well. I think they've left themselves a little time. I think they've made a bit of, a, of an error in calculation here on the Danish side. Are they going to go back up the ladder over at the A-bomb site with 18 seconds left? This should really never work, but maybe it will. Kenny knows they're walking in right on top of him. It's been called through. Nice shot for the jumping down, reining in. It's the Vice with the kill. They're going to get the bomb plant. I can't believe it. That little time, and it actually works. They were even heard. 
Talk about threading the needle here for Astralis. Now, Nico and Nexa are going to be left, and that's a great headshot, leaving Device 1 versus 2. And they don't have a smoke or a Molotov or anything to get rid of him up here, so he could do something, but it still will not be easy. Oh, so difficult. So many angles to worry about. As you can see, he hears the footsteps, gets that shot, and he's somehow able to get out. Nico a second too late, not going to be able to trade it, and that bomb's ticking down now. Device toying with Nico. And this is just going to be the game. And, and Nico, he has to back off. He has to tap out. Not enough time. No smoke to cover the defuse. Wow. I th think about how hard. It's so hard for Device to step out that far to get the kill because he's exposed from everywhere exactly. when he's doing that. That is... Yeah, very, very hard. It would have been... The, the tempting thing for Device would have been to wait there for the, for the defuse tap and then you try and take the fight with whoever was covering, but that's also how you get shot in the face, so... What? Are, the, some of these rounds, I think three out of these rounds that Astralis have, three out of six, have been very, very close. I'm sure G2 right now must have a feeling of, like, we could have had... Oh, yeah. This could have been way different. We could have had at least four rounds on the board. Oh, yeah. It's been, what, three big clutches? Yeah. For Astralis, out of the six rounds that they have right now. So... And, uh... Oh, no, I was thinking, yeah, that is G2 with the pistol round as well. So G2, they, you know, they're, it's just it's depressing if you're on G2 because uh, it's like, we win the pistol, fantastic, this is all going to work, this is going to be great, awesome. And then Astral takes six rounds in a row, just shatter you. Absolutely wild, isn't it? Nico, though, he was, um, I think, did they do that same run boost that we saw the other day where you sort of you get up to that hut out on uh, mm. out in the yard really quickly? Or the hut, I guess, up on top of the garage? The spicy hut, yeah. That's such a nasty play. Especially because if you die up there, that's it. The gun's up there. Your yeah. teammates are never getting that gun back. It's done. But it's still kind of cool. I mean, he's, he sniped off someone. It's so early in the round. Slow the straw is right down. And now the rest of G2. I mean, this is what happened last time. They went to go attack Astralis and actually lost that duel. This time, if they wait, again, 40 seconds, you can you can run into trouble. Nuke is such a strange and complicated map for that reason, amongst others. Here we go, attacking Glaive. He's taken three. Definitely could have been a fourth. But now they're down in the lower part of the side. I think this still might be uh, quite all right for Astralis. Still possible, absolutely. Oh, no. oh, they've got it. They should have every advantage here, Astralis. Although, oh, man, getting so chaotic. Megas with the Kevlar, I think, makes all the difference in that close quarters fight. He's able to take more of it. But uh, that's it. Mix holding the angle. Doesn't flip the shot. Thought he was going to miss that one for a second, and he is going to lock down Nico as well. Man, these are just, I don't want to say sloppy, but scary fights. Yeah. Feels like it could break either way there. That vent fight, for example, feels like a 50 50. F toss a coin, who gets that kill? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and they, and they, all they had in that round was four. So. Just starts off with, with a little kill on the yard, and it, it actually turns into a one on two at the end there. It doesn't change the fact that Astralis are still sitting pretty with seven, or with seven rounds, right? It's seven to one on Seaside Nuke right now. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it is really impressive. I, I you know, shouldn't take anything away from them. They're doing a remarkable job at the moment. But it's hard also not to, it's got to shake the feeling that G2 are somehow still not that far behind. You know, they're just a clutch away all the time from from stepping right back into the game. We'll see if they can find it here. Running out of time a little bit here in the first half to really get that done, though. Smoke wall early as well here from Astralis. Changing up, it up. Changing up the pace a little bit. Oh. Nico counter, yeah, just instantly cancels it out. But uh, now nobody's there to see that smoke go down from Nico. From Astralis. They're not, and look at it, he's looking over it, so he, he can call it into his team and saying, well, the, yeah, they've done all of the tricks like they were going to come outside, but they're not. And again, it looks like that kind of a setup here. We'll see if they're going to be able to do it. But yeah, so same, almost the same. Yeah, there's that one in the corner. So the same triangle of Molotovs, but it's a variation. They're trying to see if they can throw them for a loop, and I, I mean, this is just a cool little update on the metagame that you're seeing. It looks like they're still winning the fights here, G2, but that was clearly an attempt to try and throw them for a complete loop, saying we're going to do all the same things. What a wonderful, uh, what a wonderful little treat we got here. 30 seconds to try and fight your way back at a three on five, and they're already showing up. It's a good shot on Nexa. Nico also missing maybe a chance, but it's going to do a lot of damage to the device. 
to see if they could even get a bomb punt right here. Nico goes down. Hunter opening the door. And there's nobody covering Sip. He's going to get sniped from the door itself. And now it's a two on three. And there's just 10 seconds left. I don't know how you fight your way back in this one. You need to get the bomb plant right now. And it's on the other side. Go pick it up. Oh, too free. Waited too long for sure. And trying to back off here is device. He's going to get caught in the last possible second. Luckily for him as well. Yeah. He dies a half second later there. He doesn't get any money money at the end of that round. Instead, the streak is over for Astralis. And, well, I mean, I, the big detail there for me is once you have the man advantage, I think G2 are pretty much set, right? That's Astralis getting a little bit too complicated. Yeah. But um, Kenny showing some real discipline. Takes that first shot, misses it, and for you can see it. For a second, he's like, I'm going to repeak, I'm right? I'm ready. And then he does a 180 and backs off and sets up to try and punish Astralis having to push him. You can really see just in the details here. It feels like once upon a time, Kenny would have gone for that repeak, and whether it worked or not. But um, some change, some evolution to the style. A little bit more discipline on it, and I really appreciate that. I really like to see it. Kenny is just such a monster. And I, I reckon, I mean, the timing, you could see it outside, right? And you could see it towards ramp. The timing they were looking for, Astralis, was to catch people rotating to help the A-bomb side, mm. right? So they were, they, were, they were hoping to get that, and they just, for both positions, that didn't work. So once that's out of the picture, I don't know, like, you almost have to say, well, and now now we're kind of done, you know? Mm. But I still think it's very cool. It's great to see them use, use the strategy once and then use it again later, but this time for a, essentially for a giant fake, so... And to, and to bait out rotations. Very interesting. Nicely done. Nico abusing the edge of the smoke, even doing some damage. What? He got claved through the smoke as well? Yes, he did. <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh, man. Well, this is, uh, I mean, a golden opportunity here for G2 to just start running it back. CT Nuke, after all, perfectly capable of just doing this over and over again for the rest of the half. Yeah, and Astralis don't really have the money. They don't have the loss bonus. Yeah. So you could do you could do a whole lot from this position. Mm -hmm. Hunter all the way at the top of twelve to seven right now, so it's been a pretty cool game from him, but we'll see. This is again where I would start looking for discipline on G2. Three versus five. Make sure you don't just die for no reason here. I mean make sure it's it's at least to accomplish something for your team. The beautiful thing is that uh, Nico is, uh, yep, he's already on the flank. He heard them go by the entire time, and yep, he's going to be able to catch Zipnix right in the back. And so G2 were perfectly set up to receive Astralis on that lower site. Shouldn't be a hope for them. Nico's That's just pretty nasty. obnoxiously good. Four kills. <laughs> And uh, that's a third round on the board for G2. Critical. You can see, uh, you know, starting to see a bit of uh, excitement here on the G2 camp. My like coach getting a little bit uh, active there with the hands. Yeah, I mean, if, if I'm G2, I don't know, hopefully I wouldn't be thinking it right in the middle of the game, but I'd certainly at some point be thinking, man, we could have had this way earlier. This could have been from, like, fourth or fifth round. We could have been in this mode. Oh, yeah. So, without a doubt. Without a doubt. I mean, it's just when you've got a bunch of one people in front of you, it's just a cake in the teeth, isn't it? But... Who likes that? Not generally. All right. Well, they make it down with the Tech Nines. That's interesting. They jump behind the smoke. I don't like when people do that. I think it's it gives a chance for that orb to get uh, put in the board. Nexa, that's a great spray down. He nearly took down Magus. <laughs> okay. Woo! Put to bed by device. I don't know. He had the lineup for a device looking for one more, and I can't believe that he got it. Third bullet as well, and just kept on trusting it. And now the bomb is going to be down, and it's Nico and Hunter left, and they must salvage this round. They, if they let this one go, it is a disaster. That timing, and just like that, device has an op. But unfortunately for him, yeah, he peeks into it. The timing does not work out whatsoever. How would, how would you get, guess that Sip is here? As long as Magus is alive, Sip could find a kill, and suddenly he's a two-on-one. There's no reason for them to check this. Oh, he misses a little bit of a chance. Hunter low on health, and Sip knows it. He must have heard the dink. There's Magus going down, and now Sip is forced into a little bit of action here. Behind the actual silo, and Nico to save the day. But Hunter is defusing again. It's the brothers Kovac to take care of business. Does sound like a law firm when you say it like that, but still, seven to four. Seeing it from next perspective here, the double spray to save the day. Just made it all the device. Yeah. 
Actually, can we, uh, can, hmm. we, can we do that? Can we say Kovac and Kovac and just call, they're laying down the law? That they're kind of laying thing. down. Can someone Photoshop that? <laughs> See them as like Judge Judy or something. Judge Judy. Just pointing them, pointing the gavel. Say Judge Dredd. So, oh, ha, ha, yeah. Better reference. Well, regardless. Nico doesn't have a shred of mercy. Much like Dredd. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly not. Very important round to for, the, for them to win, obviously. Almost spun out of control. Uh, managed to stay alive. Aminek and Hunter, some good defense. Almost let Asana so far into the bomb side that it could have been, you know, a, a disaster. But in the end, it worked out all right. Triple on Hunter, up to 18. And a 7-5 to five scoreline. I think this game has opened up quite a bit in terms of who could be winning it. I think we're, we're into something way more interesting now. So if, if you were... If you were bored earlier, thinking, man, Astralis is just going to sweep this map off, I'd say time to time to mention tune back in because this is a pretty open game at the moment. Well, this is definitely Astralis. I mean, Astralis are by no means done yet. This is definitely show some G2 showing some resilience here. So we knew they were capable of all along. It was going against them at the beginning of the half. Sometimes Lady Luck just doesn't favor you, and that's the way it goes. And now it uh, looks like uh, she's giving them a little bit of a wink. And G2 are starting to have things go their way. Five rounds now for G2 on the CT side. Astral still in the lead with seven. Well, Kenny Hagro hasn't done this yet. Ow, and he gets him! What a shot on device! Split second and he doesn't miss! He was the he was the third man in line. He was all the way back in T spot. There were two people that were closer than device, so he must just be scratching his head thinking, why? Why me? Kenny might be thinking the same thing yeah. though, getting executed from Magus and Nico. I don't think Megas would have known that he was there, but he fired the, the, the rifle just in time for Megas to swing back. So turnaround coming in here for Astralis. A round that could have been very, very tricky, but I don't know. Megas doing what, hardly what he's supposed to do. This is one of the things that makes him such a hard opponent. Amanek spraying through Molotov on the side. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of things to manage all at the same time, Semler. That's what you get. Trying to be a good Samaritan, put out the fire. Yeah. Then the hoodlums just showed up. No. Feed the homeless, doing a bunch of things. Astralis just don't care. No. Astral, yeah. Astralis, I did. Vikings? <laughs> Saw that as weakness. Take all your stuff. I'm well, Hunter now. Well, what can you really do? All right. So that's, I mean, it's it's got to be just equally uh, equal despair for Kenny at that point. You know, strong shot. You got a great one on a device. It was perfect. And then you get shot in the back. Done so. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe a slight miscommunication. I don't know. I'm sure. I'm sure they just weren't thinking that Magus was gonna just go there that quickly. Um, he must be thinking that Nico has his back at that point, right? Yeah, maybe. Maybe it was like a residual effect from the fact that Kenny got the shot on a shot on device, and he was so far away that Kenny doesn't even really think about the fact that there could be someone way closer. I don't know. A lot of guesswork on my side here. Eight to five, fourteenth round. A lot of money on G2 from having just, you know, from having just lost that round, and the other one was close. So I'm kind of impressed that they have this buy, and it's good because that means even in the 15th round, if they lose this one, they can still put up a bit of a fight. Here we go. Strata setting up. That's not bad. Yeah, that's a nasty HG. Just lob it up there. With the three already down to half HP, but hey, that's device with that AWP. He's opened it up, takes down Kenny S. So man advantage for Astralis, and Zipnix will take Hunter. Looks like Hunter was trying to get cheeky in lobby, and now Amanek. Wondering what he can do, he's got that AUG in hand, and he's going to find the instant headshot on Zipnix, trying to fight and bring it back here, Astralis. But the pressure's going to be on now for Nexa. Flashes in, he's got to back off, he cannot wait. In the meantime, Amanek trying to get cute, lurking through the smoke, does not work. You do not fool the Magician. Hits that shot and brings it to a four on two for Astralis. Although Nexa just couldn't be happier. Picks up one and misses the opportunity to get another. I bet he could have been happier if, if he would have had the M4A4. I bet that would have been at least a double kill. Could have been definitely more than that. Oh man, heart attack for Astralis there. It definitely was, but spraying down with that M4A1, it's just not quick enough, is it? Nico, he wasn't spotted now. They need to think here. Nico dropping down the vent. Oh man, taking out Glaive and from a one on three into a one on one. He's going to try and go for it. 
do it again. Just one more shot will absolutely do it. And Device, he's just got the orb up there. If he misses a shot, I mean, Nico's got all the space in the world. He's out. Device down on low ground. He's got the gun out instead. And Nico! One versus three. And he clutches it for his team. Absolutely. What a god. Just ice water, man. No. And they all just happen to show up right in front of him here. This kill... On Dupree as Dupree just drops in front of Nico. Sick follow up on Glaive. Just everything is there. Well, so yeah. the problem is the first kill that he gets up in mini, that's the one that's super excusable for Astralis, right? That's where they're thinking, well, we don't know what he is. So you know, how do you hide from him? And like, you're just not sure, right? Sure. But then once you get that, the two versus one, I'm, I don't know. I'm sure Glaive is feeling super confident that I've got the position, I'm ready, but. Well, it's a reaction game at that point. You, I mean, it's it's Glaive has got to be just pulling that trigger instantly in the split second that it takes Nico to recover from that drop, right? Yeah. Except that Nico's just too damn fast. And Glaive was very low on health. Yeah. But it, it took one bullet to take down Glaive, right? So, I mean, advantage Nico in that sort of scenario, I guess. Yeah, it's hard to judge them, but... But, man, we've really... We've had an, what a brilliant first half. Yeah, we've had such an unusual uh, amount of clutches going on in this game, in this new game so far. It's really been all over the place. And well, now it feels like, like a real treat. We get another full buy from both of these teams. Huh. Well, let's see. What's going to be the variety this time? As Astralis do take over Lobby, holding for any aggression. 15th round, yeah. Last of the half. But again, Nico is going to be spotting this and saying there is nobody here behind this wall of smokes outside in yard. And so the focus from G2, they are going to be ready for lobby. They are going to be ready for ramp. Let's see. What they can do here. Grenade going to go. And Kenny. First one with an encounter. He just pushes into it. That is incredibly bold. Don't know if he realized that there was no one else in there, but if there had been someone waiting, he might have been dead. So, amazing defense early on. Amanek also with a kill, of course, and five versus three. And that's, I mean, that's all the grenades from Astralis used in that. Nico, not even going to waste the bullets. Just go straight for it. Yeah, he's ready for more. <laughs> Clicking away, Glaive. You all knew that was happening. Every single person watching will have seen, yep. He, when he is in this mode of playing, what an absolute delight. It's just so clean. Uh, it's just no joke. Well, Nexus is there to pick up the final kill, and it's 8-7 to seven in favor of Astralis on the T side, but what a comeback. The entire first half is nothing but Astralis, but then it just flips hard, and G2 take full control from there on out. Redemption for G2 at the end of that first half. I'm unsure about the pronunciation, but I'd love, I'd love to get it just right, you know. So so let, let's make sure that we, that, we, that we don't screw it up. Someone... Send us a recording or something of, of the perfect... Uh, <laughs> but, the, the, like, the example he gives, CS, like, in the word check, which has both sounds. I know. Which is it? I know. But still, I th I like, the, I, you know, I want to get it right. I don't want to mess it up. So let's just let's just make sure that we know. There are lots of, <laughs> lots of, lots of fun comments that we made around, like, the, the double Kovac, you know, setup. So, like, one or the other. Just I want to be sure. So help us out. Astralis going to be in the CT side. It's T side for G2, and it is clean down the middle as we go into the second half. Pistol here. Jump around the corner. Oh, device. He must be upset. He was waiting for it. It would have been an easy kill as well, but it didn't even touch the ground, did he? Nexa charging in. Sip with a pretty good response. Meg is there to help out. Sip just regaining a little bit of momentum here, but he does not have enough bullets, so it's still a three-on-three. -three. Now they're being flanked before they even set up anything down at the site, and the bomb has been lost to G2, so <laughs> it's an absolutely chaotic round. No one knows what's happening in this round any longer, and now Hunter wants to chime in. If he would have had that kill, I mean, we were right back in play. For a second, I believed Anders. Madness. For a second, I believed he was going to get that and bring it back to a one-on-one -on -one clutch scenario. But yeah, this was the first opening shot where Device gets pasted against the wall. Not the best. Certainly not what you 2 were hoping for. They were definitely looking for that second pistol round win, although it didn't really help him last time in the first half. Uh, they've uh, now successfully managed to give that up. So Astralis get the strong start on the CT side, and G2 will not go for the four spy. They will be going for what is essentially a hard eco. Straight down the fence is one, and Dupree not able to pick up that kill. 
Denied. Device already in location to go ahead and stop that bomb plant from happening. Unfortunately for Amanek, no bonus money for his team in this round. Yeah, but a great idea, I think, for, for G2. Mm. It's, it's all about... for it. Yeah, and it's all about where they're set up. I mean, it, if Estralis are out of position, there's nothing you really do about it once he's down the vents, but they just happen to be there, so... Fair play. Easy setup here. Quad kill for Sip and a lot of money with the MP9. Kill Sip money. Happy about that for sure. And that is go. Does he go? Do you want an AWP device? Uh, can hook that up for you if you want. Make that happen. But he doesn't. In fact, no. Everybody's just gonna be holding on to their gear, Astralis. Whereas G2, after that round, are going to go for the AKs. It's definitely gonna be a bit, uh, a bit light on the nades. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we'll pick it up. It's a decoy. And why though? Why the decoy? Just reasons. He likes to make noise. Hmm. But double digits now for Astralis. Ten rounds on the CT side. G2, do they just go for the gather? Try and swamp it? Looks like. Maybe the name of the game here for G2. And well, Zipnix, with an MP9, he will be hard-pressed if enough bodies come at him. Yeah. I think Nico is he's a, a one-man army outside with the AK, and the rest are pushing ramp right into that MP9. Gonna be a pretty good Molotov to slow them down at the very least. I don't think they were even going for it, they're just saying, let's just take ramp, and mm -hmm. that's reasonable. Fair play to G2, it's so early on that they have plenty of time to change their minds, and, and they might even just be waiting to see if Nico's gonna find a kill behind this, you know, movement around. Yeah, he's just looking and saying, is anyone gonna be coming for, uh, for anything? Yeah, I think that's the plan. But they're, but they're not getting their way at the moment. Astralis are being... Uh, incredibly passive right now. Which is, um, I mean, it's working out to their credit. Only down to the 1 HE and the flashbang here on the e G2 side. So they, I mean, yeah, this is going to be tricky. The one flashbang to the end of the bomb site. It works if you're pushing at someone holding just a grenade. Oh, debris! <laughs> down into the fire. And Device will get a kill at the very least. This grenade, surely, yeah, Kenny explodes. Now 20 seconds, Sip running up from behind, and a 2 on 3. I don't think they have the time. I think that's really what's messing this up for G2 more than anything else. If they had a minute here, it would be really doable to win this 2 on 2, but with just 10 seconds, I'm not sure. Surely Sip is going to be running through any second now. A little bit of noise. He actually doesn't get into the bomb is down, but it might not matter. Hunter, low on health, and he will go down. Close round, and I don't know, they made that way more competitive G2 than I thought. But they're not winning the round. Oh, do they want to buy in this round? Do you think so? They, that would be... That would be interesting if they did. That really would be interesting scenario. But, I mean, nades are so critical now in a buy round. We've seen what happens to teams where they just try and force it. Low nade count, just try to get in there with rifles. Well, that just happened to kind of G2 right there, you know, low nade count, just trying to force it with rifles. And uh, MIVR were trying yesterday, and it was not working against Astralis. I don't think uh, G2 are going to make that mistake again. It is going to be the half buy coming in here from G2. Pistols, Kevlar. And well, Hunter's got the nade, so he definitely should not be dying, but uh, they are taking a bit of damage there from that molly. Device is hearing them burning on the other side, right? So it's just, it's just so much confirmation for him. Back here with the USP, nearly picking up the kill, but he has done enough for now, so... Yeah, that worked out very well. <sighs> that timing. Usually it's Glaive that loves to play aggressive out in the yard. That's one of the things he is super well known for. Maybe just playing off a spawn there? Yeah, that I mean, could have been something like that. Still, that's a, that's a nicely handled round, there's no, no, nothing going wrong. Again, I'm still not really over that one round on Dust 2 where they rushed the catwalk and died at USP, so I'm still angry about that. <laughs> You're still holding on to that one? Oh yeah, I'm holding on to that grudge. I'm not going to let it go. But um, I'm glad to see them sort around of like this one out. I think that was important, you know? Even important for Astralis themselves just to, to prove, you know what, we're not, we're not just going to give you that many rounds like that. So I think that's important. 12 to 7, and it's looking good. It's looking super winnable for Astralis right now. They've got the money, they've got the round lead. G2 seem to be relying, I think, a little bit more in this one on on someone like Nico outside with the, with the, with the AK, right? We've seen that a couple of rounds. And it kind of makes sense because he is such a beast with it, but 
if you're not getting the kills, then is there a plan B? Maybe not. Well, we saw that um, first half of Dust 2, where you're not getting the kills. So there was no plan B for Astralis. Uh, they had three players with three kills each, and they just got trounced, right? So, yeah, that's always the thing. We, we kind of say that since the beginning, right? Where you can have all the strats in the world, but if you guys aren't hitting headshots, it's going to be real hard. Strats will, should make that easier, but if they still aren't coming through, life is going to be very difficult indeed. Well, Device decides to back off. Nico is right hot on his heels. Nico still holding the angle. Nice HEs going in, but this is a tremendous amount of damage. Big pressure getting put out from G2 onto this A side. Megis expecting to get wrapped. He's got his teammate helping him. Glaive has got his back. And who is that? Hunter getting down the ramp? No, Hunter holding outside. It's Kenny S pushing down to B side. Zitnix stops him in his tracks, and we're into a two on two. And now, who has sight on who is where at the moment? I can't believe that Magus was saved by Glaive. That was an amazing save. He was sh absolutely dead and somehow got just bailed out. All right. Well, Bomb is coming through the window, it seems like, which, I mean, that would give uh, all the time in the world to have a sip, at least to hear it and know that it's coming. They have to break that glass. Don't think it is broken on either side. So yeah, they'd love it. Oh, it is. They walk right through. So forget about that. Now, gonna go for the fight right there. But Sip goes down, and now it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Hunter versus Magus. Whoa, Magus is so far away. Yeah, wrapping around. Maybe expecting an A kind of play. Oh, buddy. Does Magus actually see us coming? <laughs> Nicely done. Good setup with the flashbang. But it doesn't matter. Hunter with a triple kill, and that was. Uh, all-out chaotic round. There was, there was so many things happening. I don't know how we could break it all down. Two on two, though. Very, very close, obviously. I think if Glaive doesn't save Magus, G2 just win it on the A-bomb side straight up. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Device getting caught by Nico at the beginning there certainly did not help anything either. But Melek, yeah, getting into it. Shout-out to Hunter. 23 kills. Um, that's pretty impressive right here. He's done a, a good job. Well, that's the end of the Astralis streak here at the first half. Four rounds in a row for Astralis, putting them up to 12 on the CT side. And now G2. They've got eight, and they're looking good. But there is enough money for Astralis to get that buy-in. So Device, Glass Cannon, AWP from him. Rifles on everybody else. A little light on the nades, but still, decent count. And G2 maneuvering outside. We'll get that smoke wall down. And deny information to Astralis. Whoa, that smoke going down from Glaive is so nasty. Yeah. That's not going to stop Nico from taking point and pushing the lower halls. And so now it is going to be Glaive in position, trying to get that information to see if they committed past or if he managed to make it down here in time. He might be able to squeak right on. Oh, unbelievable how this timing works out. But now he's going to be spotting a whole bunch of them. Nico takes a bullet to the side of the head. No way for him to respond. Unbelievable that Glaive manages to thread that needle. He's going to drop right in. Doesn't get the second kill. Unfortunate. Man, I was going to say maybe they could have even played for time there, but G2 just don't even slow down. They go straight for it. So four on four. And no armor on device. Only one smoke. They don't, like, they don't have that much to go for it. But I kind of understand why they're falling back from this. Even, I mean, normally four on four, you say, ah, oh, just go for it, but don't really think they are. And they don't have the money. If they lose this, then G2 bounced up to 10 rounds pretty quickly. Interesting, interesting. Listen, I think if G2 slow it down instead of hunting for Glaive, then Astralis get into way better positions, and suddenly, suddenly it's a super close round. So I guess credit to G2 for just going straight for it. I mean, sometimes... Rushing into a bomb side of that can, can definitely be the wrong move, but they made the right call in that round for sure. Take him out before his friends show up. All right, 12 to 9. It's, it is anybody's game in this map still. Yeah, 100%. And it's worth mentioning that uh, it is G2 in the lead right now in this best of three series. Winner match of the group. Up 1-0 after a pretty solid def well, victory, obviously, for G2. Defeat for Astralis on Dust2. So if you missed that, it was a pretty big beating. I mean, Nico, it was really just the Nico show. 
was... He just took over. But here on uh, Nuke, it's uh, it's getting it's getting spicy. Oh, the nice delay. Pushing through. Total obliteration on the upper side. The run and gun coming in from Kenny as well. Zip and Glaive, the last two alive here for Astralis. But that bomb is going to get planted. Unless they can make a play in the next few seconds, it's going to be real hard for them. And that Molly going down is just going to shave even more time off this clock. They have two Molotovs themselves, Astralis. But just like last round, you really want to throw it away in case this goes wrong. Kenny in the corner. Molotov doesn't sure. There we go, finally spreading, and he's burning alive. Two on two, jumping down. They get the kill, and Amanek, he is far away. They have a kit, and it's planted on the wrong side. He's going to have to think about that. He has to go straight away. He can't go slow. He has to swing wide, and oh, there we go. He does get the defuse in. Oh, man. I can't believe it. The last tick of that Molotov just far enough to catch him. And then they just fall like dominoes afterwards. That is a ridiculous round for Astralis to win. But they did. And it's Astralis the call for the timeout right now. The tack timeout. This is just so quick from G2 as well. It really looked like they had this entire upper A side on control. But Kenny S just getting caught in that corner. Burnt alive. So brutal. Yeah, you can see. That's a tough one. That's gonna be a tough one to shake. Listen, it's not the it's not the eyes rolling back in the head, Nico. That's gotta be a you know an upgrade. It's true, Nico Cam. Haven't had that in a while. It's been a hot minute. <laughs> <laughs> Again, add it to the list of absolutely absurd rounds we've had on this new map. There have just been so many of them. Thirteen to nine, Astralis. Gotta be feeling really good. I, mean, the, I guess the thing is, they won that round one on one, right? So it was. I think it was only one. It was two surviving. I think it was just one. So yeah, they're gonna have almost no money here. Ooh, Magus in the corner. He was flashed. Nobody could see him. And there's the spray down. Big double continues it. A quad kill. He's wrecked them all. That is so absurd. They just passed him. That might very well be a 4-3 type resolution thing. And the fact that everyone was flashed, nobody knew. Everybody's flashed, including G2. He, it's just a split second thing, Anders. He literally just made it past as Adamanek is turning left. Magis is going past his right shoulder. What in God's name is going on in this game? Unreal. You can't make it all. You couldn't if, if you wanted to produce a, a frag movie with your friends where you were just making it all up. You had to choreograph that with your friends that you couldn't do it. Like, it's just, it's so close. Ooh. It's a pre. Just really getting out there in the yard. Haven't had this aggression for a little bit. So hoping to catch somebody out there on G2, but it just did not work out. Instead, oh, he's been spotted going down the vents. Nico looking to create a little bit of room. But even spotted, that is such a, it's not, it's a fantastic move for Nexa. Who managed to make it down there? Is it Nexa? I think it was Nexa, yeah, with the Mac 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's such a smart uh, play. It's, it almost would be better if he got spotted in some sense. I mean, maybe not, but 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 it does force Astralis to, to do something to think about it. They've got Glaive down there. They've got Sip down there as well, I think. They might be out looking for a nice shot with the device. Haven't seen too much orping from him here on Nuke, and he's so exposed. Still gonna go down though to Kenny. Four on four now in 50 seconds. Bizarre. Trying to make plays there. Device really going back at it, and that's gonna end up costing him. Gives the advantage back to G2 in this tight situation. Although Dupree on the flank catches Hunter wide open. Well, now if you're G2, what do you do? I really don't know how Dupree got back there either. Just count on Kenny. I'm losing control a little bit myself here. Kenny is just the hero right now. Those are two key kills from Kenny. Zipnik's still alive, though. He could be the one to ruin their day. As uh, yeah, Next is going to peek at that information. Not able to get the kill on Kenny. Somehow the man survives with 7 HP. Oh. There's Dupree once again. No bomb plant. It was down to the last second. And they badly, badly needed that bomb plant. Still a Molotov here on Dupree. Is he going to try and put it in? Yes, around the silo. But he's flashed as he's throwing it. And it doesn't go back there. And Dupree is going to be coming down. There's no predicting these rounds. It's out of control. 14 to 10. Astralis. I mean, they, they're going to put together a buy here. But I don't even know what is going on. I have many, many, many questions. I need answered. I need a whole team of experts assembled afterwards to just try and follow up on this. 
And that's such a kick in the in the pants for Debris as well because he's just he gets he gets the flank on Hunter and he denies the first bomb plant attempt from Kenny. I mean just everything right there from Debris. But sometimes the rounds just do not work out for you. And so it will be the force on both sides here. J2, enough money for the full. And well, Astral's cutting corners. No kits, light on nades. But good gear, good rifles. And this time around, it is Device out in garage, backed up by Glaive in a moment. There's going to be a chance here. Nico looking for this fight. Glaive wins it convincingly as well. Man advantage now, and Device could be the real one to make a hero here. Big difference, and there it is, the shot. Two man advantage now for Astralis. And now then, again, this is where you want to see that deep breath here. This is a round they cannot give away. Three versus five. It's going to get them to 15, and it's going to it's going to severely impact G2's economy. So, yeah, this is just where you want to play on on all of those years of routine, right? Do not give this round up. I, I we all deserve a third map, don't we? Indeed, we do. It's been amazing. Timing on that smoke. It's going to be really very annoying. Next, I'm hoping to catch someone at the edge, but 40 seconds left right here. They need an entry just that's incredibly clean, and then Sip is saying, no thanks. Straight headshot through the smoke. Don't know if you saw a shoulder or not, but it doesn't really matter at this point in time. Device goes down, and that is also not really that relevant. They should be able to save the orb, and it will be 15 for Astralis. Um, a round away here from taking us on to the third map. It's just so weird. I don't think of Device as a Kenny kind of opera. It feels like watching Device right now is kind of watching Kenny. Or like a Kenny style, like aggressive, getting in there, trying to, you know, yeah. re-peak angles or get close quarters. I, uh, for whatever reason, that's that not the device that I uh, that I think of when I think of an opera, right? Of an opping device. No. I think about Kenny doing that. I, I, that's close quarters combat with Kenny. Yeah, he'll just harpoon you with that AWP. Yeah, that's what you think, isn't it? But I, I mean, yeah. he's done very many different things over the course of his career device with, with just with the op alone, right? Um, True. Definitely been a, a few different approaches to it. What I really liked back in the day with um, Shadow.gg was that uh, Device was the first one to start using heat maps as well, as far as I know. But he was the one using heat maps to figure out tendencies of uh, opponent, opponents, um, opposing oppers. Yeah. How yeah, often yeah. do they go to certain spots on maps within which window of time so that he could play a numbers game, essentially, think, with how he held angles? Super cool. Super I, cool stuff. I think definitely there was a lot of research going into it, yeah. Uh, I'm sure there still is, but... Yeah, I mean, now I imagine most people are doing that, right? But I think he was the one, really one of those front runners. Yeah, I, I mean, it's definitely sort of the next stage of the game in a bunch of different ways, but it's also pretty resource intensive. Um, Glaive will go down, Magus next in line. G2 with almost no weapons, just charging the bomb site and essentially wrapping on it from Mini and Hut at the same time. And it works absolutely perfectly. So Astralis need to pack it up and save these guns because they're not going to have that much money either. I was gonna say, man, that that third map is almost almost al already here. G2 saying it's not. Could still be overtime. That's a, that is actually a classic push, running on top of that mini uh, roof and just stomping right in there. Big plays. This time there was no Magus in the corner. Really interesting. So, they're going to be saving the guns. Mm. I am getting more and more people, Semler, just checking real quick, say, okay. saying it is like it is the Kovach sound more than it is like the... It's Kovac. a Ch sound. Yeah, I'm pretty it's sure. It's CH, Ch. Yeah. Of... And then we might still be messing up because that's a sound that doesn't really exist that much in English in, in the same way. So, you know. Very much so, yeah. I think it's around... I think it's it's so early on that children develop the around phonemes, is what it's called. The what sounds that you need to make, you know, for your language. Can you roll an R? Um, yeah, I probably can. Okay, let's hear it. No, I don't know. <laughs> but I think I can, but there are a bunch of them that are, that are, you know, civic, really, really hard to, to do in, uh, I think in, I think, I think it's L in Japanese that, that is like, Japanese. They struggle, yeah. Yeah, but if you teach them how to do it, like, then they, you can actually teach it to them, but it just doesn't really exist as a sound, right? So, if we screw it up, we're sorry. We're trying our best. It's the very beginning. Uh, device. Uh, you said, you know, close range combat. He's walked all the way up. Not going to open the door quite, but he's just, he's tunnel vision, literally. Yeah. He's just living this life of uh, this looking through a, a cardboard tube. Living out the dream of being a pirate looking in the sky. <laughs> no a vast. He could very well be um, searching. 
for booty right now, Anders, because this is now point for Astralis and four of them. And while he could be the one, right, to make the difference with that AWP, RG2 expecting this? Doubtful. Yeah, I mean, it's... He's, he's certainly being really, uh, really aggressive with it, and so is uh, Sip. Smoke, I think, there for, uh, for Heaven. Yeah, nice smoke. And um, Dupree, a little bit forward in the hunt. They're outside, though, and Device will pick off one there on Nexa, but that's, this could still be just fine for G2 in the sense that they've made their way downstairs. They're going to knock out Sip and losing one guy and up. Oh, wow. Nico back with the headshots again. That's good strike fear in the hearts of everyone. Finally taken down, still 30 seconds, so enough time to put the bomb down. And Nico sneaking around, the, or sorry, Hunter sneaking around the back there to make sure that even if it was an attempted retake here, it would be very hard to deal with. No kit on Dupree, so I think any any dreams of, of fancy Ninja Diffuse is probably not going to happen. That's what he wants, that AWP. Yeah. Maybe looking to see if he can get a party shot. Oh, he just checked, and I don't think he saw it. Did we see somebody managing guns from G2 there? No, I'm that would have been next level. Steal that away. Yeah. It's going to be 12 rounds for G2. So they are well within striking distance. The money all of a sudden is a huge factor for Astralis in terms of how many more actual rifle rounds they can get out here. And if they could put a stop to G2. If it goes into overtime, that would be something. I would, I would really enjoy that. Twenty-eighth round coming up. The countdown slowly uh, fading away. Orp on Kenny. Orp on Device. Limited head armor on Astralis. Shouldn't make any kind of a big difference unless they're being wall banged. Really, no kit at all. Keep that in mind for later. Glaive outside. Like I said earlier, usually I, I think of Glaive as being the aggressive one out here. I feel like they've been doing it so much that G2 will surely be checking. I mean, they could ignore him if they go this way, but. But I don't think this is going to be a, a, the sort of play that will catch them off guard. Oh, he heard that scope. Yeah, that's why he's looking for it. Good thinking on Glaive. Mm. And nobody peeked into it either. The device is going to be on the lower tunnels, and this is going to be that big shot. Last we saw, Nico eviscerates Zipnix here in the last round. Taking point again. Nico, no fear. There it is this time. Jiggle right into it. And Dupree's there to help his teammate out. There's a crossfire established. Kenny is going to be ready. Clips device through the floor, though. Concrete saving him, but not from the HE. Kenny hunts him down. And now Magus versus Nexa on the upper. Things are going to get real interesting here in just a moment as Glaive is going to spot Hunter coming around. Shadow on the floor. Going to see Kenny as well. No, Kenny's close enough. They stack up. Just barely survived the encounter. And Magus peeks in. Dude, Kenny is coming alive in this round. I can't believe he maybe would have had that shot too. It looked like it was right on Sip. But he was accurate, and Dupree, look at that, running through the fire to catch them. This is so smart. Yeah, there's no reason they should be expecting that. They just put down the Molotov, and he ran straight through it. Brilliant play out of Dupree. Now it's Nexa. He has the bomb. One versus two. We've seen so many clutches. Is it going to be another one? Oh, they're going almost straight for him, but he does hold it. That's a lot of nerve. Holding it down. If he dies, that's it. Map is done. And now he's sneaking back. He has the smoke and everything else. Is he going to find a good use for it? Or just go straight for it here with the M4? Yeah, Dupree is coming in from the one angle and up on the high ground. You see without the X-ray. Yeah, that's so hard to spot anyone. He has no idea where they're coming from right now. A little bit of noise being made. The one flashbang already used. The Nexa, this is his chance. But he's going to go down to Sip. And they don't have the kit. So it's close. But they'll be able to get it 16 to 12 at the end of Nuke in favor of Astralis. And that means, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go on to a third and final map. What a treat this has been. So many amazing plays. And we're going to get a whole nother map to revisit uh, and relive all of that. I really can't wait for it. We will be back 